Hello everyone, here's our lesson on section 9.2. We're adding and subtracting rational expressions in this lesson. So we've multiplied rational expressions, we've divided rational expressions, and now we're going to be adding and subtracting them. With each one, I've kind of brought you back to elementary school to remind you what we do with all of these things. I'm going to do the exact same thing to start off this lesson. If we just look at a fraction of 7 twelfths, adding a fraction of 3 eighths. Right now, we just do this in our calculator. But when we were in elementary school, we had to do this by hand. The first thing we had to do when we added and subtracted fractions is we had to get common denominators. So the common denominator between 12 and 8 was 24, was and is 24. So we kind of said, what do we have to multiply the denominator by to get to 24? Well, we multiplied it by 2. So to make an equivalent fraction, we have to multiply the numerator by 2. So it is 14 24ths. We did the same thing to this fraction. 8 times what number got us 24? 8 times 3 got us 24. So if we multiply the bottom by 3, we got to multiply the top by 3. 3 times 3 is 9 24ths. So now we added these two. We kept the denominator the same. And then we simply added up the numerators. So 14 and 9 is 23 24ths. So we're going to do the exact same thing with rational expressions, which again is just a fraction. Now we're going to throw in polynomials in the numerator and the denominator. So we have this fraction, 7x plus 15y squared, 7x divided by 15y squared, sorry, plus this fraction, y divided by 18xy. So we have to get common denominators. So each and every one of our factors has to be common. So we have to get a common denominator between 15 and 18, no x's and 1x, that's where this comes from. So we have 15 and 18, x, and we have a y squared and a y to the first. That's where this comes from. So to find the common denominator, you have it in your notes. We could do this very quickly by putting this in our calculator. So what's the common denominator? What number do 15 and 18 both go into? We can just go like this in our calculator and press the math button. And then go over to num. So scroll over one to num. And then go down to number eight. And that's your LCM, your least common multiple. What's the least common multiple between 15, comma, and 18? That number is 90. 15 goes into 90, and 18 goes into 90. And that's the smallest number that both of them go into. So getting back to this, our common denominator is 90 for here. As you can see, as far as variables are concerned, they will always be the same or bigger. So if you have zero x's in this one and one x in this one, it'll be the same or bigger. It'll be the one with one x. In the same way, if we have y squared here and y to the first, what's bigger, a 2 or a 1? A 2 is obviously bigger, so your y squared is going to be your common denominator. It's always going to be the bigger one. So your common denominator then is 90xy squared. Your common denominator is 90xy squared. So we have this. Here's our original question plus this fraction. And we said that the common denominator... 15 and 18 both go into 90. And then xy squared is going to be your common denominator. So now we have to make an equivalent fraction. So we have to multiply the numerator the same thing that we multiply the denominator by. So I ask you this question, 15 times what gets us 90? 15 times 6 gets us 90, yes? And then we have to multiply by x because nothing here multiplied by what gets us an x here? Well, x to the first. And then how do you get from y squared to y squared? Well, we didn't multiply anything to get to the y's. So we got to multiply by 6x. We got to multiply the top by 6x. So 6x times 7x, 42x squared. That is your equivalent fraction for the first one. Let's do the same thing for the right fraction. 18 times what number gets us 90? Well, 18 times 5 gets us 90. So we have to multiply the bottom by 5. We're going to have to multiply the top by 5. Now, we went from x to x, so we didn't change anything for our x variable. So we're not going to multiply the numerator by anything for the x's. 
and then we went from y to y squared, so we multiplied by a y to the first. So in the denominator, we multiplied by 5y. That means in the numerator, we also have to multiply by 5y. So when we multiply y times 5y, we get 5y squared. And there we have it. We made our equivalent fraction. So once we make our equivalent fraction, now we simply add up the numerators and put it over the common denominator, which is 90xy squared. So there's our common denominator, and our fraction in the numerator is 42x squared plus 5y squared. You combine like terms, but neither of these two terms are alike, so our answer lies at this. Your answers are going to be a little bit more messy for today's lesson. There's our answer. Let's try problem number two. So what's the common denominator between 6 and 14? You don't have to use your calculator, but it helps if it if you can't quite come up with it fast enough. It's math. Scroll over one to num. Go down to number 8, LCM. And it's the LCM between 6, 14. And that is 42. Both 6 and 14 go into 42. So I'm going to put a 42 right here and a 42 right here. I'm adding two fractions together. Now your letters, you don't have any A's here, and you have a squared here, so it's always going to be the same or the bigger exponent, which is the a squared one. a squared, a squared. And then you have b to the first and b squared here, so your bigger exponent is going to be your common denominator. So b squared is the bigger one. So there's your common denominator, 42 a squared, b squared. So now we ask ourselves the question, what did we multiply the denominator by? We multiplied it by 7. 6 times 7 is 42. We multiplied it by a squared, because no a's to get to a squared, we had to multiply by a squared. And then to get from b to the first to b to the second, you have to multiply by b to the first. So we multiply the denominator by 7a squared b. So what do we have to multiply the numerator by? 7a squared b. So now in the numerator, we have an equivalent fraction of 30 5, because 7 times 5 is 35, a to the 4th b. There's your numerator for the first fraction. Let's now discuss this second fraction. How did you get from 14 to 42? You had to multiply by the number 3. How did you get from a squared to a squared? You didn't multiply by anything. How did you get from b squared to b squared? You didn't multiply it by anything, so all you did to the denominator was you multiply it by the number 3. So what are you going to do to the numerator? Multiply it by the number 3, and we get 27. So your common denominator, like we talked about, is 42a cubed b cubed. Ah, a squared b squared. Sorry about that, class. And then... Your numerator is going to be these two terms added together. So 35a to the fourth b plus 27. And there's your answer for this one. 35a to the fourth b plus 27 over 42a squared b squared because you can't combine any more like terms. So there it is. Let me know if you have any questions on that. It is a difficult concept, so please feel free to ask me any questions when you get to class tomorrow.